ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this illustrious, goal-oriented epitome of service to humanity, founder and CEO of Access, Mr. Nii John Olajide, to deliver the Babcock University 2022 Onyx Graduating Class Commencement Speech. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's obvious that all of you here don't know me well enough. When I say hello, I expect everyone to say hello back. That's the polite thing to do. So we're going to do this differently. We're going to do this well. When I say hello, I want you to say hello back as enthusiastically as you can. Good morning, everyone. That's much better. It is humbling to be here today and as I listen to the introduction um, welcome me to come speak I was moved with emotion because I couldn't even recognize who was being talked about but I'm grateful to be here today the Chancellor Pro-Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Tayo, members of the Board of Trustees, Council and Senate, faculty and staff of Great Babcock University, distinguished guests, proud parents here today, and of course, the folks that I came here for today, the great Onyx graduating class. You know, when the Vice Chancellor spoke earlier, when he called out your name, you responded in a certain way. I want the same thing. So great Onyx graduating class. Let's do that again. Great Onyx graduating class. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen and friends, and of course, we cannot forget gentlemen of the press that are here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. Of course, I want to acknowledge my wife that's here and my children, and of course, my wonderful parents. Without their support, I will not be here today. So I want to thank you all for your constant love and support. As I said earlier, I'm humbled by the opportunity to speak with you today. As some of you may know, just as COVID was shutting down the world, I was scheduled to be here to come speak to a group of Babcock University students. But this audience today is much larger than I could have ever anticipated. So much larger. It feels like it wasn't so long ago when I was studying hard to finish my degree and face my own future beyond school. I am sure that all of your hard work will pay off. And you'll one day go on to play important roles in helping Nigeria develop, and beyond that, important roles in helping make our world a better place over the coming decades. In May, I had the privilege to speak to the flagship class of the University of Lagos Law School during their annual reunion of over 40 years while they were standing shoulder to shoulder in their efforts to prepare for their future careers, they forged such close bonds that have made it a priority for them to want to get together every year, even after 40 years. They set a wonderful example for all of us on, this, on the significance of maintaining close ties with those who play a significant role in our accomplishments. To give you an example of how much this means to me, at Access, our chief financial officer is my brother, Nero Lajide, and one of my childhood friends that I've known from primary school, Dr. Olu, is our chief technology officer. Doing things to improve the world with people you enjoy and admire, really, 
truly is about as good as it gets. We're working hard in the United States and around the world, but our thoughts are never far from Nigeria. And for the Onyx graduating class, I hope that some of you are going to work together, build on the relationships you already have, and go on to change the world. About a year ago, I led a discussion among our leaders at Access Globally to encourage all of us to dream about what is possible for our company and examine our own purpose for our lives. I know my own purpose. I know that my purpose in life is to serve others. And I suspect that many of you feel a similar purpose. And that right now, you're giving a lot of thought to what is possible. It can be daunting to consider, especially as a young person, you're stepping into life outside of school. I remember in my time, it was a time of great pride in my accomplishments, but also a time of great uncertainty as I prepared to launch myself into the world and use my talents to make the world a better place. I didn't exactly know that what that was going to look like, but I knew without a doubt that I wanted to have a positive impact on the world. And I knew, I knew that I could not do that on my own. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, it takes a village. And it is true. We need community and mutual support. We have to show up for others and know that they will do the same for us. My message for you today is rather simple. I've observed that if we move intentionally toward our goals and dreams and have patience and have patience, we can go very, very far. The most important thing that I hope you take away today is the understanding that no matter what you seek to do, no matter what you seek to do in your lives, anything is possible. As I'm sure many of you have heard, whatever your mind can conceive of, and you believe and work hard, you can achieve. To give context for why I say that, it may be helpful for you to know some of my background. I am the third of five boys. And as you heard earlier, I was born in Ajegunle, in Lagos. As a group, we've all had the opportunity to earn university degrees. You may also be interested to know that neither one of my parents had more than a primary six education. My parents may not have had much of a formal education, but I'll tell you, they were very wise and I could not have asked for better parents. And they taught us the value of a good education. My parents worked as distributors for Unilever, the British Dutch Consumer Goods Company and sold goods to local retailers from their warehouses and stores. While I was having a good time playing football as a kid, I loved to play football with my friends. They also teach me about business and the, and the power of rebates and discounts. I was blessed to be born to parents who had business savvy and cared enough to share their knowledge with me. And they provided a comfortable life for us in Ogba Ikeja as our family progressed. During those years, I picked up a love of computing and technology. I was the type to want to learn things, and that continues to this day. I read everything I can get my hands on. I am interested in a lot of things. And when I was in school, I learned about computers and technology, and I remember thinking about all the possibilities that they could provide. My parents knew another family with children in, in Dallas, and that's how I ended up in Dallas, where I earned a degree in telecommunications engineering from the University of Texas at Dallas, where I'm a proud alum. In my early university days, I worked all kinds of jobs to pay my way through school. I worked as a welder, a bricklayer, at fast food restaurants, on construction sites, 
and all other types of jobs you can imagine. I did whatever was available. I missed attending a lot of my classes as I was always working multiple jobs at the same time. Round the clock, I might add. Sometimes when I attended class, I was exhausted from work, so exhausted from work that I could never stay up in class sometimes. However, I would always show up for my test and take my exams. And I studied hard for my exams and especially my final exams. I share the story with you so you understand my journey here today was not easy. Not easy at all. And for you, especially the Onyx graduating class, I want you to remember whatever hardships or challenges you face along the way, with focus and determination and your faith in God, you will overcome. Did I say that? Should I say that again? Whatever challenges you face, whatever hardships, if you work hard, stay focused, and maintain a faith in God, you will overcome. He will not let you down. Being at my university was great timing because the Dallas region was the telecom capital of the world with global companies like Texas Instruments, AT&T, Lucent, Alcatel, Ericsson, Nokia, Microsoft, and others with a strong presence in the region and an active presence on my university campus. There was so much going on in information technology at the time, and my school, the University of Texas at Dallas, was a great school and the perfect environment for me to go beyond what I already knew. So while doing all I could to stay enrolled in school despite all the financial challenges, I made the most of every opportunity that I had. A dear friend that I met in Dallas, who is also Nigerian, and a Bob Creek University alumnus, by the way. Tracy, I have roots here, and that's a story for another day. This friend was a director of nursing for a local home healthcare technology, com home healthcare company, rather, and asked if I could help with some IT work. I, start, I started asking questions, and very quickly, I could see that the business, and in fact, the entire industry, was underserved from a technology perspective. I started my company in 2007 as a consulting firm out of a two-bedroom apartment. In Nigeria here, we call it a flat, a two-bedroom flat. I slept in one room, and the rest of the flat was our first corporate headquarters. As you can see, we have very humble beginnings. As I continue to engage with clients, I could see an opportunity because the organizations wanted to focus on delivering excellent patient care and they had no solutions. My thinking became clear. I wanted to empower them with technology to make their lives easier and I saw that I could help solve a problem for healthcare organizations and professionals and I also saw something very important. I saw that the entire industry, the entire healthcare industry globally needed a change. As healthcare costs continue to rise, payers, whether public or private, or individuals for that matter, are looking for ways to reduce spending while maintaining or improving quality. Treatment at home is often more cost effective while being more comfortable for the patient. In Nigeria and all other parts of the world, there aren't enough resources to build traditional healthcare delivery models like hospitals. Africa has a unique advantage. Africa is the leader in leapfrogging technology to leverage the most current innovation to solve problems. Healthcare at home will increase access to quality care for people all over the world. And for this reason, I have no doubt that the future of all of healthcare globally is in the home. I'm sure most of you have a hard time imagining getting older and being healthy and not being healthy but eventually that will happen to all of us. And if we're lucky enough to avoid any premature tragedy, many of you probably have parents or grandparents or family friends who need special care. At Access, 
we provide cloud-based solutions that can be used anytime, anywhere, so people can receive the absolute best health care efficiently and the privacy and comfort of wherever they call home. I share this with you because I was fortunate to recognize an opportunity that I could address with my own skills. And I want to challenge all of you here today to look for opportunities that can benefit others from your unique gifts. We all have unique gifts. We all have opportunities to contribute to the world in our own way. As important as the technology has been in our success, our culture at Access has been by design. Because I had a vision for the type of company that I wanted to create and the kind of workplace that I wanted to be a part of. The most crucial thing we've done at Access is create a solid company culture that is based on collaboration, transparency, clear and open communication, diversity, and inclusiveness. And um, I am proud to say that we're recognized as the best place to work globally. We call our way of doing things the access way. It guides us on how we treat people, very important. How we treat our clients, how we treat our partners, our community, and essentially all stakeholders. In our organization, we have, more than, we have people from more than 45 countries that work at access. And in, in, in this is over a thousand person organization, and I have no doubt that this diversity of the talent and diversity of ideas that we have has contributed tremendously to the success of our organization. Diversity and inclusion are key to ensure we benefit from hearing the voices and perspectives of others. It applies to businesses, it applies to communities and organizations, applies to nations, and all types of policy making. At Access, we say, may the best idea win, regardless of where that idea comes from. Everyone in our organization is included and encouraged to offer up their ideas to make us a better organization. Ours is a culture of humility where everyone is valued and the contribution is vital, vital to the success of the organization. Basically, it's a culture of performance and merit over ego. For a nation like Nigeria, particularly, I believe that when we're able to harness the power of our diversity and build a nation where young and old, rich or poor, Christian, Muslim, or any other religion, people from the north or south or east or west, majority or minority, strong or weak, able or disabled, when they're fully embraced and included in this journey of nation building based on values of hard work, merit, honesty, fairness, justice, openness, and transparency, then can we start to realize our fullest potential. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria, this nation, is endowed with abundant resources. And this onyx graduating class, this graduating class, represents the very, very best of all that's possible for our nation. So I remain optimistic because the future of this nation is very bright because the future of our nation rests in your hands, in your hands. Keeping a growth mindset and continually learning is so important. I bet all of you are thinking that after you graduate, you'll be as smart as you can be, and that's all you need. Nothing could be farther from the truth. You're only getting started. And learning good habits here to keep you learning because it will play a huge role in how successful you become. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In fact, you will learn soon enough that the more you know, the more you realize how little you know.
at Access, even though we're a global technology provider, we maintain an entrepreneurial mindset that keeps us innovating to solve the challenges faced in increasing access to quality healthcare for people all over the world, all over the world, by leveraging the power of technology. Our Access vision is to be the global healthcare technology leader and most admired for our people, for our partnerships, and for our solutions. These are not just words to us at Access. A lot of companies pay a consulting company to come craft their vision. We don't do that at Access. We work together to come up with it. It took us three years to come up with a one-page vision mission um, document that we put together ourselves, and we talk about it constantly to remind us of the type of organization we need to be at all times. And that clarity guides us every single day. As an entrepreneur, I've learned a lot of things, including how critical it is to adapt after failures. I know you thought I was only gonna share my success stories. No, I'll tell you the real story. The truth is, like most success stories, we've had to endure our share of failures right from the start. In fact, I remember we were unable to get our first flagship software working. We had gone to see a client. We couldn't get the software to work all day. And I felt even worse because the manager offered us pizza while we're doing the work, and the software did not work. Talk about being awkward. We left and stayed up all night to get it to work. And the next day, we called this manager and said, hey, we've gotten the software to work. Can we come back? And she said, John, please do not come back. And candidly, I would rather not see you again. Look, if you're thinking of starting your own business, I suggest you don't have that type of experience with your first client, OK? Obviously, we learned from that. And we started to attract a lot of clients. I share that story to let you know that there is no straight path to success. Maintaining a belief in yourself and staying strong through times of adversity are essential to whatever success you seek. As you start out in your career, you will, have, you will no doubt have feelings that you're not ready to take on new challenges. And just so you know, those feelings do not go away easily. A few years ago, I spoke to a young professionals group about ways to overcome feeling like an imposter. These were not recent graduates. These were not fresh out of college university people. These were folks that had experienced, that had experienced some success in their lives. But overcoming self-doubt is something we all face, including me. Just want you to know that. I shared with them a couple of simple ideas that I think are relevant for all of us here to consider. Firstly, I want you to listen to me very closely. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's the only way to grow. You have to adopt a learning mindset and accept that to grow, you have to put yourself in positions beyond what you think you're ready for. Leave your comfort zone. That's how you grow. As some of you may have heard already, there is no growth in a comfort zone, and there's no comfort in the growth zone. Again, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And secondly, put time in and do the work. Be interested in what you're doing, and be reliable. Be someone that others can always count on. I want to emphasize the importance of leadership and excellence to your future success. Very important. Obviously, as you've heard me share already, we had a rough start at the beginning. And a few years later, we started to attract a lot of clients. But even a few years ago, we had another big challenge to overcome. I want to tell you that. As I said earlier, it's no straight path to success. As you can imagine, healthcare is heavily regulated in the United States. And the governing agency that oversees healthcare payments is always putting out new regulations. So in 2017, there was a new regulation that went into effect, into, into effect that we were not ready for. 
and our clients were not happy. Things did not go as planned. We apologized to our clients and took immediate steps to improve our software. It took us a few very, very difficult weeks to get everything right, but we learned from it. This year, we are the biggest change in two decades in how organizations pay by, that get paid by the U.S. government for providing home health care, just the biggest regulatory change in two decades. Because we had learned from our past failures, we had solutions built into our software seven months in advance that are the best in the industry. And because we provided great solutions and thought leadership, we're continuing to gain bigger and more clients all over the world. That's leadership and excellence in action. We assessed how we needed to improve, and we developed concrete plans. And we executed every day to create an excellent solution that surpassed our clients' expectations. But now, we're the standard for the industry globally that everyone measures themselves against. Leading to achieve excellence in the long run is one of the most valuable lessons that you will learn. Take time to do the right things from the beginning. Lay a solid foundation for your personal development and for whatever organization you may work for. I might add that while it's great to land a, uh, an amazing job with the quality education you have gone from Babcock University, it's even a lot more rewarding to create jobs for others. Nigeria needs a lot more job creators. I also want to share something that I've learned that's an essential component of success. And this one may surprise you. So I want you to listen closely. This may surprise you. It's been my observation that many people are looking for the perfect fix, the perfect hack, something you discover, the perfect fix, a quick solution, and it's game over. It's human nature to look for shortcuts. But I'll tell you what, there are no shortcuts in life. Success takes time. Did you hear me? Success takes time. And time requires that all of us appreciate the value of patience. Sometimes, and this is a surprise, sometimes doing nothing can be an effective strategy. I'll say that again so you hear me. Sometimes doing absolutely nothing can be an effective strategy. Sometimes you have to plant a seed and let it be. We can run to, to rush bringing a flower into the world, but it will blossom in its own time. Plant the seed, let it be, stay patient, that flower will blossom in its own time. I believe that we're all getting slightly better or slightly worse every day. At Access, I often comment that we're either growing or we're dying. It's binary, nothing in between. But growth, the type of growth that I'm talking about, does not have to be dramatic every day. Just making a little progress every day can lead to meaningful improvements. These are incredibly talented young people today, so we can do a little quiz. A 1% change is barely noticeable in isolation. But because of the miracle of compounding, it can have dramatic consequences. So here's a question for the Onyx graduating class. If you could get 1% better every day, by how much would you get better in one year? I want you to ponder that. Onyx graduating class, if you could get 1% better every day, by how much would you get better in one year? Let me tell you, you're, you're probably thinking it'll be, it'll be by more than 365% because of compounding. A lot of people actually think it could be between five or 10 times. But let me tell you the answer. The answer is 37 times. Meaning by being just 1% better every single day, over the course of one year, you can be 37 times better at whatever that you're doing. 
And likewise, if you're getting 1% worse every day, you're going to be 97% worse at the end of the year. Change that is barely noticeable starts to add up over time. So please, pay close attention to your habits. Pay close attention to your habits. What you do every day is your life. I want you to hear me. What you do every day is your life. So pay very close attention to your habits. As part of the leadership and excellence that I talked about earlier, I've also learned the value of being involved in the community wherever we are. I've been tremendously blessed to be a part of the Dallas business community. The Dallas region is welcoming and is the most prosperous region in the United States and indeed the world. There is no place in the world as focused on business prosperity as the Dallas region and that focus is paying off. You may be interested to know that the Dallas region by itself is the 23rd largest economy in the world. You hear me? The Dallas region by itself is the 23rd largest economy in the world. So let me give you context. It just so happens that Nigeria is number 24. Access has benefited tremendously from the exposure that I and others on my team have had to so many of the outstanding leaders that we interact with in the business community. As was shared earlier, in 2020, I had the privilege of being the chair for the Dallas Regional Chamber of Commerce. As you all know, it was the year of COVID. Talk about perfect timing being chairman. At the same time as a leader, you never let a good crisis go to waste. It was a challenging year navigating through COVID and the racial unrest in America resulting from the killing of from the killing of George Floyd by a white police officer. I see some of you nodding because you know that story. All those connections helped me grow and create valuable relationships throughout the entire community. And I can tell you one thing. I continue to receive today a lot more than I, than I gave. As you all know, it's a lot more blessed to give than to receive. I gave all that I could and I continue to receive today a lot more than I gave. Having great relationships with others matters a lot. It'll make a lot of things in your life easier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you get together as friends, particularly if you share common interests, take the time to develop common, just discuss common challenges and how you can address them together. I will conclude today by letting you know that there's a, there's a growing interest in doing business in Nigeria by lots of American business leaders. As was shared earlier, Access already has operations in Nigeria through our global partner, Cavista in Lagos, where we currently employ over 250 engineers. In addition, I personally have made significant investments in agriculture projects in a kitchen state that will employ tens of thousands of people. I have investments in other sectors of the economy. I am passionate about economic development, and I look forward to seeing all of our investments make a significant impact in people's lives and the communities that we operate in. Just prior to the COVID outbreak, I attended a gathering of the most esteemed American business leaders and dignitaries, and several of them my friends. And several of them expressed their interest in opportunities to do business in Nigeria. Those conversations that we had are ongoing. As you know, there's several American firms that already have major oper operations here, and we need those numbers to grow. Nigeria can benefit from those interests and it can learn something from Dallas. It is important to create a welcoming, safe, and secure environment, and an inclusive environment that provides opportunities for growth. It's important to lay a foundation of integrity with a mindset of future prosperity. And perhaps most of all, 
It is important to believe that anything, my friends, is possible. If I could go from being born in Ajegunle, in Lagos, to where I'm speaking in front of you today, you can be anything that you want to be. I know how important that is. Believe in yourselves. Live with vision. Live with purpose. Be a leader. Be humble. Respect the dignity in every person, regardless of their status or position. And strive for excellence every day. As I shared earlier, it's important to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's important to realize that success takes time and that you need to be patient. And perhaps most of all, it's important, like I've said, to believe that anything is possible. I am genuinely humbled and honored to speak with you today and grateful for the opportunity to share my thoughts and your interest in what I've had to say. I wish you all, and the Onyx graduation class especially, I wish you all the best of luck in making your own contributions to the world. I know you will go on to do great things. I have no doubt in my mind about that. Don't rush to get it all figured out. But plant your seeds, water them, trust in life, trust in God. Everyone here at Babka, everyone in this community will be cheering for your success. And as I've said earlier, I have no doubt in my mind at all, no doubt at all, that you will go on to do great things. At Access, we end every meeting that we have with a cheer. So today we're going to do that together. So let's all stand up. I want everyone here to stand up. Did you hear me? I want everyone here to please stand up. Everyone, please stand up. Everyone, please stand up. And on the count of three, we're going to say anything is possible. Okay? One, as loud as you can, by the way. One, two, three. Anything is possible. Thank you all. Good luck and God bless.